You going for a ride? Yep. <laughs> Katie has been following Ezra on his bike ride. Oh, she might be completely pooped. She followed him all the way around. He, he went out to the road, all the way up to that road, and it came all the way back down. That is probably about a mile ride. Oh, yep, she didn't want to be left behind. I've been having my little morning routine up here on the front porch. Reading, having my coffee, and I was just going through some seeds yesterday i was sitting out right here and i had my coffee cup and it was right here and i have these trays and these are little soil blocks that i made and i was making them to start seeds in but I, i've never used soil blocks before I, it's just like a blocker and you mash the soil down until it forms that and so it's it's a way to start seeds with less waste and I've never done it before because typically I've sold plants and you need to have them in some sort of container. But I thought, well, we'll give it a shot here for my own personal use. Now, the only problem is that I don't have like a greenhouse, so I can't really protect them from rain. So I've been just sort of experimenting. I didn't want to start a bunch of seeds in them and have them be destroyed by getting rained all on. And uh, anyway, I picked one of those up and I was trying to see how moist it was and I this one was obviously not in the rain so they're a little dry and when I squeezed it, it just exploded all in my coffee <laughs> yeah it was right so I went through my seed collection and I pulled out some things that I wanted to try and start and plant um, so a lot of these things are like lettuces this is a joker lettuce uh, drunken woman fuzzy headed frizzy headed lettuce I thought that was a funny name and here's a like a greens grazing mix parsley I did grab some sunflowers these are pro cut sunflowers and they're 60 days to maturity and I think I'm gonna spread out some of this topsoil and plant those and then mulch them really good now there's a chance that they might get just completely engulfed by grass but there's also a chance that they could grow and I could end up I think if I continued to mulch them after they come up, I could suppress the grass enough. And we might not have 60 days until it freezes, but we might. That's kind of how it is whenever you're planting in the fall. You're always taking a risk. But you figure out your first frost date by just searching first frost date and your zip code or the closest city. And for me, mine is listed, like, I looked at the few closest cities. And mine is going to be sometime in the first week of November. But the thing is the frost can be a couple weeks early and a couple weeks late. Now if it's a couple weeks late, I'll definitely get to cut sunflowers. If it's a couple weeks early, I might not. But either way, it's worth planting for me. Nice bike ride is. <laughs> Katie is filthy. I guess that's what happens when you're a low rider. You uh well, low rider in tall white grass. Yeah, in the tall white grass. Is that it, Katie? Are you a low rider? <laughs> Her and Bear will go running through the grass in the morning and he'll come back with wet paws and her, the entire lower half of her body is soaked. I had to re readjust my camera. I put the leg of it in a food bowl and Bear laid down and <laughs> he about took it with him. So I can't really speak to the places that get very cold during the winter. Um, I know that just all over there are places that are getting like negative 20 Fahrenheit or even colder. What is that? Like negative 29 30 celsius like very cold in the winter and i'm assuming that if you live in a place that is just extremely cold like that in the winter that there's really not much you can grow without supplemental heat um having like a heated greenhouse with grow lights and stuff like that or maybe doing hydroponics inside um i do know that i did a video years ago showing how to grow like salad greens in a soil bag with an inverted like plastic clear tote over the top of it and I received a lot of photos from people who had done that in places like Michigan places that got pretty cold and they were growing lettuces and kale and mustard greens and different things that are that are pretty cold hardy and just that layer of protection with the plastic was enough to keep that going but anytime you try to grow something through the winter you're taking a risk you know I mean you can try to protect it but we just can't guess we can look at weather records and know about what things are going to be but like last year in arkansas we had 
some of the coldest temperatures that have been on record in the last almost 200 years. Definitely it killed some stuff. Not a ton, I mean a lot of things still lived, but you just, it's always a risk when you're growing through the winter. So for me, like I'm growing this stuff, and I live in a place that stays pretty warm, and if you, if you do, if you live in a place that stays fairly mild throughout the winter, I mean you can still do quite a bit. You can grow a lot of brassicas, like these root vegetables. I've got a lot of dark red beets here, turnips, different root vegetables, and carrots. A lot of things that are growing underground, their tops may die back some if it freezes hard, but the roots a lot of times will stay completely fine. Uh, last year I did experience some, some pretty severe damage when we got down to I guess it was like negative five uh, Fahrenheit, which it was pretty cold. And that, that finally did in some of the things that I normally grow throughout the winter. I usually grow that stuff completely fine when we're not getting that cold. So I'm gonna plant a lot of these things. In fact, I plant more of this than I need. Last year I grew a ton of like roots, rutabagas, lots of kale, lots of lettuce. Um, I do a lot of brassicas, cabbages, and cauliflower, and bro broccoli. I always plant more than we necessarily need because it's nice to have stuff to share. Usually farmers markets are not going through the winter so it is hard to just go find fresh produce and so I like to have excess. And anything that's extra that I grow in my gardens I can give to my animals because my animals at that point they're primarily eating dried hay and grain and so giving them something fresh to eat is also good for them. So these are my seeds that I'm going to direct sow. A lot of the roots will be direct sown. I am going to go ahead and put those sunflowers in. The frost will kill them. Um, some different herbs and some different things that I'm going to go ahead and start in soil blocks. And this is my little kitchen garden which is kind of underway and I will tell you guys more about this stuff. Um, I've got a video coming up showing putting these beds together and telling you more about them. Here's the soil blocks I left out in the rain because I just wanted to see how well they held up and they held up pretty pretty good. I feel good about it so I'm going to go ahead and put seeds in these today and that's why I brought those out. And I also found some started plants at a local nursery. For those of you who are local, I got these at Wingard's in Lexington. See, I finally started planting my green stalks now that I got these plants. So fall plant starts are, I have, I have some opinions when it comes to buying started fall plants. Now, I am of course growing in a warmer place, as I said, and that means that we have two really distinctive gardening seasons. In the summer, where I live. Anytime you've got summer temperatures that are getting higher than about 85 degrees Fahrenheit and like I guess that's 28 degrees Celsius, it's too warm during the summer to grow brassicas and carrots in a lot of case root vegetables because those are going to go straight to seed. So we have a summer garden and a fall garden. And you kind of just have to figure out how cold your winter gets, which your growing zone, the USDA growing zones, that is 100% based on your um, average low temperatures. And that goes, it goes in 10 degree increments, Fahrenheit, uh, 10 degree increments. And so for every 10 degrees colder it gets in your area, you lose a gardening zone. And here is zone eight. And so like the coldest it ever gets here is really in like the teens, which means that there's a lot of this kind of stuff, like uh, fall plants, kales, cabbages, brassicas, sweet peas, all of that. They're like grown commercially here. You drive past fields and you see like entire fields of kale. Um, it's really neat because where I'm from in Arkansas rice is the number one agricultural crop and um, soy and so you drive past big fields of that <laughs> but I've never seen large fields of like kale and cabbage and tomatoes and peppers growing which is a really cool thing that, that they do here but when you go to buy started plants it is a benefit for me to buy started plants because like for instance Brussels sprouts I almost always buy my Brussels sprouts started because Brussels sprouts take a little longer to get going and if I wanted to grow these through the fall and winter when they grow where I'm gardening I would have to start these seeds in like early July late June and so they would definitely have to be started indoors because starting them outdoors it would be too hot for them. 
they would either struggle to germinate or they would germinate and they would go to seeds super quickly. I have in the past started seeds indoors, you know, multiple times when I had a good setup for that, but this year I didn't. You know, we were in the middle of moving. Um, we're living in this house. It doesn't have as much extra space. I'm, I used to have a garage and a basement and a big laundry room where I had a seed starting shelf and I don't have a place for that here. Eventually I will. We'll have a seed starting greenhouse and we'll have an indoor seed starting space in our workshop but we don't have that stuff set up yet. So I knew I was gonna buy started plants this year. However, I do want to give you a few pieces of advice if you are buying started fall plants for your fall garden for the first time. I was able to find these plants which are not a national brand, okay? So there are big brands that start plants and ship them all over the country, at least here in the U.S., and having spoken to people who live in other countries, I believe that it's the same. Now, a lot of times you'll have the big brand. A lot of times, like your big box stores, your tractor supplies, your stuff like that, they will get fall starts of that big brand. The problem that I have is, is a lot of times that those are like five dollars for a four pack and when you work that out a lot of times you're paying one dollar per plant and if you consider this is a broccoli plant i'm gonna get one head of broccoli from this plant so if you're paying one dollar for one head of broccoli you're really not saving that much money. I know that I bought some cabbages at the farmer's market last week for a dollar each. And I'm thinking when I'm looking at plants that are gonna end up working out to being a dollar or more a plant, I'm like, man, I could have somebody else grow that for me for the same price. Now, I like to find plants like this that are not the national brand. Typically, you're gonna find these at local garden centers. That is my favorite place to find fall plants. If you live in a warmer place, you really kind of got to hit the nail on the head. I start calling those garden centers in August, and as soon as they get the plants in, I go and buy them because they don't get a whole lot of them because there's just not as big of a need for them. People do not buy, they don't put in a fall garden as much as they put in a spring garden, so the window is small. And I was able to get these plants for $16 per flat. It's still not as economical as starting seeds but it is better than paying five or six dollars for a four pack so I do like to look for those brands another thing you will find usually started by the big national brand four packs and six packs of some things that you should never buy started plants of any root vegetables at all if you buy a four pack of started beet plants you are buying a four pack of beets and paying paying a dollar a beet that doesn't make any sense that isn't so not even worth it especially considering the fact that beets grow really fast they do great from seed and buying those started in a pack like that just doesn't make any sense same thing with sweet peas english peas um, i will see started packs of those and again it's six dollars now whereas you're going to get more than like one i think a beet one beet seed grows one beet whereas a pea plant can grow and you can get lots of of peas off of that uh, they just grow really fast and so when you see the little package of pea plants and you've got sprouts that are like this big if you put a seed in the ground today they would be that big in the matter of just a couple of weeks and so to me you're not getting that much of a head start versus the brussels sprouts which when you get a plant this big that might be like a six to eight week old seedling so if you were to put those in the ground now you're definitely getting a head start with that started plant and the same thing is with cabbages and broccoli like heading things they just take a little bit longer whereas peas if you put the pea seed in the ground you're harvesting peas in like you know, 45 or 50 days versus the 70 to 80 days that it takes for a broccoli to form a head or a cabbage to form a head. And so anytime that I'm buying started plants like this, because it was really for me, the choice on these things was to buy the started plants or not grow them. Um, and, and so I decided that it was worth spending a little more money to have the food growing in my yard. But I'm also buying the things that I know I didn't have time to start, and I'm gonna go ahead and direct sow all those roots and all that stuff. Hey, sweet Maya. Hey. What you doing? I'm about to try and call that soil place again. Yeah. Finding, I guess we just got spoiled with our uh, American compost in Arkansas because we found it and then we just used it the whole time we were there. Yeah, we also had a delivery driver that we knew really well. That too, which, you know, starting just, over. Yeah, starting over. 
So we're getting the soil to build the front flower beds as well as to fill the beds up here. And then maybe some extra compost. I'm just gonna get an entire truckload and we'll just see how far it stretches. Yeah, I approve of that. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that I did decide to go ahead and purchase started was lettuce. Um, I'm also going to direct sow some lettuce. Lettuce grows really fast. So these are not super old starts here, but another tip with this you'll see that i've got like one maybe two plants in each one of these green stalk cells lettuce seeds are tiny 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 so when you buy things commercially started that the seeds are really small the margin the greater margin for human error with tiny seeds works to your advantage so like i got these cells of lettuce plants and I'll just pull one of these out. So here's like one of the little packages. So there's four cells in this, this thing, which I guess worked out to be about $2 since I bought it by the flat. Well, this, this one cell has one, two, three, four, five plants in it. And so in actuality, one of these four packs has something like 20 plants in it. And all you have to do to separate these, and like when I planted them in my green stalk, um, I put like one or two plants per pouch of the green stalk. Because if you plant plants really close together, they just won't get as big. They'll still grow, and in the case of lettuce, that's fine. So like when I do it in the soil bag, I just broadcast tons of lettuce because I'm going to harvest it all as baby greens. But by putting these in the green stalk with one plant, and I just very carefully will tease the roots apart here of one plant, and do that with all of these, they get bigger. And ultimately, I get more lettuce for my money. So with, it only took like a few of these packages to fill that whole green stock. So essentially like $6 to fill the whole green stock with started plants. And to me, again, whenever you're weighing out that, that money, um, it's worth it to me to have that salad sooner because I'm paying $6 for a package of organic salad greens as it is. And so to fill that whole thing up for like $6, obviously it was worth getting food sooner. So that's kind of my main handful of plant buying tips for the fall. I, I will find some of my older videos. I've done like multiple videos on fall gardening in the past. I actually really love the fall garden. There are some great benefits to growing food. If you live in a place where you can grow it through the, the fall and winter months, because there's just not the same pest pressure, the stuff that you grow during these months just doesn't require as much hands-on activity the weeds aren't growing like they do um, things take longer obviously you're not getting as many sunlight hours during the day when it does start getting cold things kind of do really significantly slow down but with just some really minor measures even just like a little bit like a cold frame with um you know an overturned tote some frost fabric i do have some frost fabric covers for my green stalk i have some frost fabric that i can throw on top of things i've been known to throw a bed sheet on top of my garden if i know it's going to get really cold but like just minor efforts can still yield food i didn't realize until we moved here how very spoiled i was <laughs> to have so much food always growing out in my yard i'm really feeling the absence of that and it's worth it for me to get the fall garden in even if it meant buying some started plants. I hope you'll consider it. I hope that you'll consider the risk worth it if you live in a place where you can keep something growing and um, I hope that these tips help you make good sound decisions where you don't end up paying five dollars for a handful of beets. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you until next time.